Hello and welcome to today's video. So what I'm doing is stripping down and rebuilding this small engine. Now this is a 4 horsepower Briggs & Stratton engine and it's usually fitted to something like a walk behind or pedestrian lawnmower or a vacuum or something like a small chipper, anything really horticultural or that along those lines these engines usually fit to. So this engine is having a rebuild because it has got a bent crankshaft and the reason I know that is because when you pull the cord to turn the engine over the crankshaft um, wobbles a bit and usually that is a sign of it being bent um, because when you turn it over it doesn't quite turn perfectly you can tell it when you look at it um, so what I'm doing is I'm taking it all apart and I'm going to replace the crankshaft now obviously I'm not just going to throw in a new crankshaft without even double checking that it is the crankshaft which is the problem um, but I do find out at the end of this video that it is indeed the crankshaft which is damaged so I will be replacing that in between this video and the next one so anyway moving on to the actual rebuild itself you can see at the moment I have just taken off the top covers of the engine and I'm currently removing the fuel tank and carburetor so the carburetor is basically just held on by the one bolt in the middle and one at the front which attaches to the front head cover and there's the linkage which runs from the carburetor to the governor linkage okay so next we're removing the governor flap and this is basically what spins out when the engine slows down which makes the linkage to from the governor to the carburetor open up the butterfly and give the engine more power so this is just bolted in with one bolt and that easily comes out moving on I'm now removing the armature or the magneto whatever you want to call it and that is what creates the spark the flywheel spins round and there is a magnet on the flywheel and there's also on the coil which is the magneto of the armature everyone calls it different things but it all means the same thing um, and that generates a spark and it sends that to the spark plug and then creates the combustion in the combustion chamber right so now the muffler I'm sorry it's so fast paced but it's because it's a time lapse um, the muffler, this is just held in by these two long bolts which go straight through the muffler into the crankcase itself and this will just pull off and there is a gasket on that which stops any fumes from escaping before they go through the muffler and that will also keep the noise down as well okay so now the breather cover now inside the breather cover there is the valve stems the valve springs and the retainers and they are what open and close when the engine is running there is the intake and there is the exhaust valve so you can see I am just removing that, there's two screws or two bolts for that um, and they will just come off and I'll be able to remove the valves later ok moving on, we're now onto the head and what you've got to be careful of here is to remove every bolt very slightly, just un unscrew them very slightly before you take it off because if you go around in a circle then what you'll do is you'll actually warp the head or you could warp the head you might not if you're very lucky but if you just go around in a circle and remove each one all the way without slackening the others off then that's a very bad thing to do because you can warp the head so what you'll do is go diagonally and just slacken each one off a tiny bit and gradually work around and then when you've slackened it off enough then you can remove them all fully and you can then take the head off um, but if you want to remove the uh, head without damaging the gasket which you inevitably will do you'll damage the gasket normally and you would normally just replace the gasket the head gasket um, but if you do want to try and reuse it which isn't advisable but I guess it's possible um, then you will have to very carefully remove the head and try not to break that gasket but normally it's welded itself onto the head or the, the uh, crankcase itself so it would normally need replacing but you can see now that is the combustion chamber there's the two valves on the right the exhaust and the intake and you can just about see the piston down there and that will be coming out very shortly so now we're moving on to the flywheel and this is held on with one big nut and this just needs slackening off and then when that's slackened off that will be removed 
So you would normally remove the flywheel with a flywheel puller, but just for the purpose of this video, because I had to do it quickly, I did the, the old trick with a hammer, a copper hammer though, and a, a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver. And that will usually bring off the flywheel, but it's certainly not advisable because you can damage the, the case and you can, in some cases, damage the flywheel as well. So it's not advisable. Uh, you can use it, but um, it's just not an advised way to do it. So now we're moving on to the crankcase sump. And this is held on by several bolts, which need to be removed in the same way as the head. You just need to slacken them off, go around, but not in a circle, go diagonally, slacken each one off a bit, and then you can go and remove them all fully, and you shouldn't then warp it. Now you can see I just had to hit that off with the rubber mallet, which you wouldn't normally do. It's only because the crank is bent and it obviously got stuck. And you can even see from this angle that it's a crank, that it's a bent crank. So it's almost guaranteed that that's going to be replaced. So I am now removing the piston. You can see that what has just come out before this was the camshaft and that is made of plastic in this engine. In some engines they are actually made of metal. So I'm just twisting the crankshaft so I can have accessibility to the bolts for the conrod and they just slacken off and I can then remove those. For those of you who don't know, you can see another gear on the crankshaft and that is a timing gear and you would time that up with the camshaft so the engine fires at the right time. Okay, so now I can twist the crankshaft round and one of the ends of the conrod will come off so you can then push the piston through and then just make sure that you reattach the end of the conrod and then you will not lose it and make sure you put the bolts in the correct holes together and then there is no chance of you mixing anything up or losing anything when you come to put it back all together. Now apologies for the rain on the roof, this came off very quickly and it was unexpected. So there wasn't really much I could do, but luckily it was getting close to the end of the video. So at the end of it all, always good to clean the work surface before you rebuild it because you can find any loose parts or anything else. So this is part one of two and hopefully you've enjoyed it. Please stay tuned for more videos like this in the near future. And of course there is the subscribe button on the screen. Thanks everyone.